Finally, the smallest components of the diencephalon are the epithalamus and the subthalamus. Epithalamus, as we said, is kind of a fancy word that includes, among other things, the pineal gland and the functionally not well understood habendular nuclei. We know that the secretory output, the major secretory output of the pineal is melatonin, and we know that the pineal gland knows when to increase melatonin output because it is closely linked with the suprachiasmatic nucleus and releases melatonin according to the circadian rhythm, meaning that when it is dark out, melatonin release is increased because it presumably has sleep-inducing properties, where when it's light out, the pinealocytes know to decrease melatonin secretion in response to that aspect of the circadian rhythm. And finally, we know that the subthalamic nucleus is a major indirect basal ganglia pathway structure, and an isolated lesion of it, usually in a hypertensive patient, results in a contralateral hemibolismus that results from a less active indirect basal ganglia pathway and a more active direct basal ganglia pathway as a result. And again, just some details about the epithalamus. We know that it's part of the diencephalon that's situated most posteriorly. It contains pinealocytes that are light sensitive. Their major secretory product is melatonin, although not the only secretory product. It's closely associated with the, and closely tied to circadian rhythm. And it is environmental light mediated through a retinal suprachiasmatic pineal pathway that regulates the secretory activity and the output of melatonin. And as we previously just indicated, the subthalamic nucleus is a major component of the indirect basal ganglia pathway. And then finally, just a comment, just a comment as we indicated earlier, pineal tumors, when they, when they present themselves, may result in the signs and symptoms of paranoid syndrome. And paranoid syndrome results from compression of the rostral and upper portion of the midbrain in the area of the pretectal pretectal region and the superior colliculus. These patients tend to have impairment of vertical conjugate gaze because that's a role of neurons in the area of the superior colliculus. And they're likely to have a bilaterally suppressed pupillary light reflex because of suppression of the pretectal neurons whose job it is to link optic nerve axons bilaterally with ocular motor um, parasympathetic neurons. And then finally, just a chart that summarizes in chart form the major functional activity of the hypothalamic nuclei, beginning with the largest of them, mammillary body linked in the limbic system involved in wordingus encephalopathy, as we've indicated. The arcuate nucleus, the home of release and inhibitory factors, including dopamine, which is the best-known inhibiting factor that regulates prolactin release not by promoting its release but by restricting its release. And we distinguish the anterior and posterior hypothalamic regions as being temperature-sensitive, preoptic area involved in the regulation of release of gonadotropic hormones, dorsal medial nucleus, not well understood, it seems to be involved in what is known as sham rage or savage behavior, And then completing the story, we know that there are feeding and fullness centers, feeding center being in the lateral hypothalamic zone, ventral medial nucleus and the tuberal region being a fullness center. And we talked about the suprachiasmatic nucleus regulating circadian rhythms and the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei releasing the neuropeptides that that are found in the posterior pituitary and they being antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin and oxytocin.